Welcome to Everest VR. Before we can start our journey, we need to go through the basics. First things first, see those footprints on the ground? Now position yourself on top and make sure you are facing in the same direction as the toes. That's it. Now let's figure out how to use our hands. You should have a controller like this in each hand now. Try moving them around. There's a trigger button for your index finger. Try to press it. Perfect. The face button one is for relocating. Hold the button down and you will see a relocation beam. Release it when the beam turns green and you will be relocated. Try it now. Let's try that again. Well done. Now let's try to pick something up. An ice tool is something that might be useful. To put the object in your backpack, you simply drop it behind your shoulder. Try it now. That's it. <coughs> Ascenders are used to safely overcome difficult obstacles. You can grab them with your hands and slide them along the rope. Try it now. Perfect. Let's look at the carabine. It can be clipped on to a rope for safety. To use it, grab the carabiner and release it on the marked location on the rope. Try it now. Well done. Next, let's have a look at the ladder. To climb up, just grab and pull down, one hand at a time. Try it now. Well done. One last thing. When you see a waving icon appear, wave your hand towards it and you will perfect. Now, let's start our journey. She has many names. To some, she is Sagamartha, the goddess of the sky. To others, she is the apex experience, awe-inspiring, unforgiving, the pinnacle of human achievement. We know her as Everest.
To conquer her will require patience and endurance. Though the final ascent to the top of Everest only takes 24 hours, summiting takes weeks of adjusting to the extreme height. Your journey begins at base camp, the central point for all organization and logistics. There, you must pay your respects to the mountain gods. At the start of every season, the Sherpas hold a puja ceremony to bless the expeditions, the equipment and the climbers by offering food and burning incense. During the ceremony, if a crow lands on the pole at the altar, it bodes well for you and all those who will be climbing the mountain. Good luck. Finish the puja ceremony by placing some food or drink on the stone altar.
Your ascent begins on the Kumbu Icefall, a tumbling field of ice that guards the entrance to the Valley of Silence, the Great Western Kum. Prone to avalanches, its topography ever-changing, it would be impossible to traverse without the Sherpa. With a new route each season, the Sherpas must also account for the constant motion of the glacier each day. For many climbers, this perilous crossing is the mountain's most daunting trial. On the 18th of April 2014, Kumbu Icefall claimed the lives of 16 Sherpas who perished in an avalanche that engulfed them on the glacier. Senders and lean forward slightly. The ladder is going to wobble a bit, but it's secure. Trust me. Take your time. Good job. Now climb the next ladder. Just let me know when you are ready to leave.
Once you've scaled the icefall, you reach Camp 1. From there, you must make a long trek to Camp 2, which is situated in the upper section of the valley. Towering ahead of you is the next major obstacle, a formidable wall known as Lotse Face. This is the steepest vertical ascent of your trek, over a thousand meters of hard blue ice where the slightest misstep can be fatal. Midway up, you spend the night at Camp 3, where tents are nestled on small ledges hewn into the icy slope. Your reward for this arduous climb is to reach Camp 4 at the South Col, which lies on the boundary of Nepal and Tibet. There, you will prepare for the final push. The summit is now within your grasp. Well, we better hope the weather clears up tonight. This might be my final attempt. How many times have you been on Everest? I've been up on this mountain three times. Never made it to the top. Three times? How far have you made it? Well, the furthest I got was just below the hill we slept. What happened? We had to turn back. I needed to get my partner down. He'd gotten very sick and was running out of oxygen. Is it right? Yeah, just barely. But the thing is, he also saved my life that day. Oh yeah, how so? Shortly after we came back, the summit was hit by a massive storm that lasted for days on end. No one who summited that day would make it back. What is your thoughts on that? We should climb together. We do. We rest in the tent over there. If I were you, I'd do the same. You're gonna need it. Call for that. Time to wake up. The weather has cleared.
You leave camp in the middle of the night. Your aim? To reach the summit in the late morning. That gives you just enough time to get back down without being exposed to extreme weather in the afternoon. At daybreak, you reach the south summit. From there, you can see the true summit of Everest. Halfway between the two summits lies the final challenge of your climb to the top. The knife ridge provides narrow passage with a drop of thousands of meters on either side. Make it this far and you've reached the infamous rock face known as the Hillary Step. At this extreme altitude, you will need every bit of energy you can muster to keep going. The Hillary Step allows only the passage of one climber at a time. Having to accommodate a stream of climbers on their way up and weary climbers on their way down, it has claimed the lives of many. Their frozen remains along the path are a solemn reminder of the pearls of the death zone. Watch your step. Just put one foot in front of the other. Take your time. Just let me know when you are ready to leave. the end of the ridge, and the end of the world. Then nothing but that clear, empty air. There was nowhere else to climb. I was standing at the top of the world.
People ask me, what is the use of climbing Mount Everest? And my answer must at once be, it's of no use. There is not the slightest prospect of any gain whatsoever. Oh, we may learn a little bit about the behavior of the human body at high altitudes. And possibly medical men may turn our observation to some account for the purposes of aviation. But otherwise, nothing will come of it. We shall not bring back a single bit of gold or silver, not a gem, nor any coal or iron. If you cannot understand that there is something in man which responds to the challenge of this mountain and goes out to meet it, that the struggle is the struggle of life itself, upward and forever upward, then you won't see why we go. What we get from this adventure is just sheer joy. Joy is, after all, the end of life. We do not live to eat and make money. We eat and make money to be able to live. That is what life means and what life is for. George Mallory.